If you were like me, you probably have binged all the Notion videos that you can find because you realize that this is a pretty awesome productivity tool that combines multiple apps into one place and can organize basically any aspect of your life. However, Notion is a bit complicated to set up and suddenly the tool that you thought was gonna change everything turns out to be a nightmare. But don't give up just yet because in this video, I'm going to share all the do's and don'ts that you as a Notion user, especially a beginner, should know so you can start using this app with confidence. I promise I'm gonna help you get there. If we haven't met yet, my name is Kaylin. I am your fellow Notion and productivity nerd. I love sharing how this tool has helped me systematize all the different aspects of my life and business. And I love helping you figure out Notion for yourself as well. So if you think that is something you're going to want to be in a long-term relationship with, make sure you click that subscribe button so we can make our friendship official. All right, let's get into it. The first do is to change your mindset about Notion. Notion is not an out-of-the-box tool like ClickUp or Trello or Todoist where it's pretty easy to figure out. You just kind of use the system that they already have to organize your tasks and projects. Notion is not like that because you are basically building your own systems from scratch. It's like a blank slate and they give you all these different little Lego pieces that you can combine together to build what makes sense for you and how your brain works, which is pretty cool but it's also really overwhelming. Now that's not to say you can't get some sort of out of the box features with Notion, especially if you use the templates that they provide for you when you first sign up for the app. I believe there are like four to five templates that they give you to start you off so it's not completely blank. You can also find a lot of templates on Etsy, but if you don't understand the structure of Notion, you're not gonna know how to customize these templates and get rid of things that you don't need or won't use on the template and add things that you would like to see as a feature. Those things are possible, but you have to understand how Notion is built in the first place and all the different features and functions of it. Because with Notion, you can't change something if you don't know how it was built. So recognize that this is going to be a learning curve. And even though you don't know Notion yet, I promise you will. My first don't kind of plays off the first do, but that is don't start at level 10. Don't try to start at a level 10 Notion workspace. The videos that you are watching here on YouTube are most likely filmed by people who have been using Notion for years. They started small, they started building on top of that, adding new features here, new features there, and suddenly they have this incredibly robust workspace that you're like, that is so cool, I want that. But no one starts out that way. We all start at level one and work our way up to level 10. The best thing that you can do with Notion when you're first starting off is to pick one thing that you want Notion to do or organize in your life. This will help you get familiar with the platform as you're starting to understand how Notion works. I have three ideas for you to try with this one thing method. One, you could create a daily habit tracker. I have a video that shows you how to create a very simple daily journal database that tracks as many habits as you want to track. Although I suggest you stop at six because we wanna be successful, right? We gotta give ourselves the biggest chance to succeed and that's not to overwhelm ourselves with all these things that we want to do. So that's one thing. The other thing that you could try is creating a task list, especially Especially a master task list database because while there are checkbox blocks in Notion, it doesn't allow you to filter those tasks by certain categories or priority level or energy level. And so a database is going to be the best option for that. If you want to learn more about master task list databases, I'll also link the video that I did about that. I do provide a template for it. So if you don't want to start from scratch, if you want to like learn how it's kind of built and set up, you can of course download that for free, but you can also kind of go along with me in the video and see if you want to set one up for yourself. And then the third option is to create a recipe database, a recipe book. So it's very easy to have one page per recipe to upload a pretty photo, the link to the recipe that you found on the internet, how long it takes to make. You can bring it all together into Notion, which is going to help you make meal planning a lot 
easier. Shameless plug, my Notion Anatomy Building Blocks class actually takes you through step-by-step -step how to build a meal planner and recipe book. So if you're looking for some fun homework and you also wanna learn more about Notion, make sure you join me in that class. The next thing is do understand that everything in Notion is either a page or a block. A page is really just a blank document that Notion gives you those Legos that you can play with, that you can build out a page. You have, via the slash command, so many different blocks to choose from, way more than you will ever use. I like to stick with the heading blocks, the checkbox blocks, the bullet blocks. You can do a lot of things to format the page. Databases are also technically a block that you can add into your page. And not to make things any more confusing, but you can actually turn a page into a database. And databases contain an organized collection of Notion pages all together into what looks like an Excel spreadsheet on steroids. And that's so you can sort the information in a more meaningful way. Kind of like I was talking about earlier with the master task list, you could filter it by category, priority level, etc. I go into a lot more detail in that Notion Anatomy class in terms of pages and databases so you can understand the difference between the two. Because as we go into the next section, you don't want to use a page for what should have been a database. It's really important to understand the difference between the two so you know what you want to use. Generally, you're going to use pages, like standalone pages that are not part of a database, as a dashboard or hub. So this is going to be like an organized page that's going to link out to a bunch of different pages around your workspace. So like you could have a finance hub that links to different areas of your financial life that you wanted to track, debt, savings, expenses, etc. The rest of the information that you will be putting in Notion is most likely going to be a database because remember what we talked about before, databases are groups of multiple pages around a certain topic. We talked about a task list. I'll also use an example as a workout database. So you would not create separate standalone pages for every single workout that you wanted to sort in your database. You would create a database of all your workouts and then every page within that database is going to be a separate workout page because databases have what are called properties. So you can add different tags and other context to the page that is going to help it be sortable. So if I went in one morning and wanted to do a workout that targeted my abs, then I could go in and I could actually look in my workout database and see every workout that was tagged with an abs tag. So you see what I mean? Like I could not easily find that information if it was a standalone page not connected to any other database. But databases allow you to filter by the properties and the properties give you extra context to the Notion page. So with a page, it's going to be a hub. It's going to be a main dashboard. With a database, it's going to be a group of like items items that is sortable and filterable. Speaking of databases, do use as few databases as possible. You do not need a database for every single type of grouped items. And what I mean by that is we'll go back to the master task list. You do not need a separate database for every home task. You also don't need a separate database for every work task or school task. Put them all in the same database and then because databases are so powerful with their filter functions, you can then create different views of the database and filter it to the type of categorized tasks that you want to see. On my master task list, I have a tab that is called home and personal. So I could look through all my tasks on this first tab, but that's not necessarily helpful to me if I wanna find out what are all the home and personal tasks that I need to do. Then I can click on that tab. I filter it by the home and personal category. And so those are the only tasks that it is going to show me. So as much as possible, keep like information. So like the top level of tasks, in one database, the top level of workouts, the top level of travel destinations, the top level of books. Put them all in one database and then use those properties to add context to each page that you can then filter by.
Number six, don't keep all your pages on the sidebar. So when you first get into Notion, that's where all the pages start out. And whenever you create a new page, that's where it's going to end up. Well, that can result in a really cluttered sidebar. So you want to kind of taking what I said earlier about main dashboard hubs, keep those on your sidebar, keep a home management hub on your sidebar or a personal dashboard or a finance or a goals dashboard, keep those on your sidebar and then put everything else in those dashboards so you're not cluttering up your Notion workspace. If you need to move pages into those dashboards, you can just easily click on that page and drag and drop it into the other page, or you can right click on the page and say move to, and then select wherever you wanna move that page to. A quick mention about the favorite section, which is on the top left side of your sidebar. You can favor any page by clicking the star icon on the top right of the page, and it will show up under your favorites for easy access. So I use this for pages that I access quite often, and I don't want to be fiddling around with a lot of different clicks. I also use it to favor a current goal or six week sprint that I'm going towards. I use it to favor a piece of content that I'm working on that I need to go back to and I don't want to hunt for it to find. So use that favorite section sparingly, but for things that are current or things that you want instant access to that you're accessing every day, multiple times a day. When it comes to pages, do format pages the right way. Notion, thankfully, gives you a lot of different options, those Lego blocks that we were talking about. But before you start formatting the page, make sure you go up to the top right hand side, click the three dots and make that page full width because that's gonna give you a lot more space to work from. I do this for every single one of my pages every time I create something new. Then start thinking about the hierarchy of your page. How do you wanna organize the information on it? What kind of information do you need to put on the page? Take advantage of those heading blocks. You have three different sizes, H1, H2, and H3. You can color the backgrounds, you can add dividers, and then you can put text and check boxes and bullet points underneath. I also love using call out blocks and quote blocks just to highlight important information that I want to see right away. And then you can also create multiple columns on your page if you want to rearrange the information a little differently, just click on the domino icon with the information that you want to move into a column. Then you can drag it to the right of the information that you want in column one, let go, and it will automatically create two columns. You can also access multiple columns by using the slash command and typing in a number and col, and it will also come up with a column block that you can just drag and drop your blocks into. This really helps keep your pages visually pleasing, organized, and tidy. But here's a warning when it comes to pages. So this is my next don't. Don't nest pages more than three clicks away. Now this is just a great rule of thumb that I got from Marie Poulin. She is an excellent Notion teacher and creator of templates. And it really makes you think of how you're gonna structure your Notion because Notion is different in terms that it doesn't have folders that you're putting all your documents into like Google Drive or Evernote. It can nest pages within pages within pages. You can go as deep as you want in terms of the hierarchy with this, but then it's kind of hard to find what you need. You can always, of course, use that search button, but I like to keep my notion to where everything is accessible within three clicks, and then it's just a lot easier to use. If you end up going a little bit too far and a little bit too crazy with the pages, you can always check the breadcrumbs at the top of Notion. This is really helpful to know if you were like lost in the deep oblivion of Notion and you're not sure how to get back to where you came from. This will show you all the top level and sub level pages so you can get back to where you want to go. Here's another pro tip with this. If you find yourself wanting to link pages between each other, you can always mention another page. And that's a great way to find what you need if you don't wanna like go to a different part of your workspace and click into it or use the search function. If you have a page where you know you're gonna be referencing another page a lot, then you can just do the at symbol, type in the name of that page, choose it, and it's going to embed into your current page as a clickable link. 
when it's not the original page and it's a link to a page, you'll see this little arrow pop up next to it on the left hand side. And I use this because I have my travel planner and my meal planner on my sidebar, but I also want to reference it when I'm on my personal dashboard page and I have my personal dashboard as a full screen and I don't show that sidebar, then I can just easily click into the pages that I need to reference. Okay, here's an important one. Do know where to find Notion commands because there's a lot of different places to find all the features and functions of Notion. So if you can't find it, look in one of these four places. The domino icon next to every single block is going to pull up ways to change that block, duplicate the block, delete the block, change a list format or put colors behind it. So make sure you check there if you're wanting to change some blocks. You can also highlight the text and a top menu will pull up for you to comment on that text or add a link to the text or format it, bold, italicize, underline, etc. Then we go to the three dot section. So whenever you see a three dots, know that it's going to give you some more options to play with. The three dots on the top right hand side of each page is gonna help you customize the page. You can change the font, you can change the size of the text on the page. You can also delete or duplicate the page or move it somewhere else. The three dots on the upper right hand side of databases is going to give you a lot more options to change the view of that particular database. So if you didn't wanna do what looks like an Excel spreadsheet, you can also change it into gallery view, calendar view, list view. There's six different views that you can choose from. You can toggle on and off different properties. You can filter the database like we were talking about. So there's a lot of different ways to customize the database using those three dots at the top of each database. And finally, number 10, don't delete pages you don't need, or at least not right away. So I recommend creating an archive page that sits on your sidebar that is holding place. It doesn't need to look pretty or organized in any way, type, or function. It just needs to be there so you can drag and drop other pages and databases that you think you might not need anymore. And why you don't wanna necessarily delete them, I mean, delete them if you're absolutely positive that they're not connected anywhere else, but I have deleted things and then realized that like, oh no, this was actually connected over here and I, I really needed that page even though I didn't think I needed it anymore. If you accidentally delete something, you can recover it within 30 days, but I just like to play it safe and if I am not 100% positive that I'm not going to need that page anymore, I will just drag and drop it into the archive folder. I hope this was really helpful to understand the different do's and don'ts to improve your Notion experience. If you still feel stumped by a few things in Notion, let me know in the comments below and we'll work through it together. I love helping people understand this platform because I know it is so powerful and can become the organization system that you have been searching for. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one.